Hi, I'm Susan Rutledge, and in this video, I'm going to show you how to customize and embellish your fonts using glyphs in Adobe Illustrator. You probably already have some glyphs in your font library now, but there are others you're going to want to go get, and I'm going to show you how to do that. And then I'll show you how to use those glyphs to make lettering that is beautiful for any project. I'll show you some of my favorites and how I arrived at some of the designs you see here on my screen. And I'm going to save the best for last, so be sure and stick with me until the end. Here are some of my favorite fonts where I've added the embellishments to them, and you may want to pause the video and write them down because if you're a Creative Cloud subscriber, you can download these for free. Now, when we talk about glyphs, actually every single character in a font is a glyph, whether it's plain or whether it's fancy. So the particular kind of glyphs I'm talking about in this tutorial are the swash glyphs. These are the ones where the extensions are winding around and they're very decorative. And that's what I'll show you how to look for even in your own library. Now, the swashes tend to come with the serif fonts and the script fonts. What's the difference? Well, I've circled some of the serifs here in the Times Roman font, where these are just little lines that come out at the ends of the characters. The sans serif means without serif, and these are more streamlined. So you're going to find the swash glyphs with your serif fonts and with your script fonts. Now let's select this here. This is Times Roman. I'm going to come up to Type, down to Glyphs, and this opens the Glyphs panel. Now I can scroll down here and I'm seeing plain letters. I see some of the language glyphs. I'm not seeing really any of the swash elements, the embellishments in this particular font. So Times Roman wouldn't be a serif font that I would look to to find swashes. Now I'm going to select the script font. Notice that Illustrator switches in the Glyphs panel to Natura, which is the font that I have selected. And right away, I'm seeing a lot more options here. And in each one of these boxes where there's a little triangle, if I press down on that triangle, I see even more letters. And these do have a lot of the swash elements. So this font is one I would classify as a swash font. Now, to go through all of the fonts in your library, you might want to not waste your time looking at the sans serif fonts. So you can come over here and actually filter what you look at. So I'll click on this little pull down menu and I can choose the script right here. And that gives us just the script fonts or I can choose some of these other classifications with serifs. But by filtering your choices, you won't waste your time going through fonts that are definitely not going to have swashes. Now let's say that you don't find the kind of swashes or the font that you want. And if you're a Creative Cloud subscriber, just come down to your browser and type in fonts.adobe.com. And here in the search bar, type in swash fonts and press the return key and illustrator brings up some different choices if you see one that you like you can kind of scroll through and look at the various options and if you want to add one here we have adlery pro swash well i'm going to add that font for sure now i'll close this up and I'll select my text and then go to the Properties panel and type in Adlery. Now nothing shows up and that's because Adlery isn't a script font. So I've got to remove the filter. I'll click here again and go up and clear all. And immediately Adlery Pro Swash shows up. I can click it and it's applied to my Word on the artboard. So downloading the Swash fonts is as simple as that. 
Now, instead of going through Adlery Pro Swash, I'm going to move to some of my favorites and show you the ins and outs of using the glyphs and applying them to your letters. So I'm going to select Susan, and the first one we're going to do is Natura. So I'll begin typing it. I've already downloaded Natura, so all I have to do is click to apply it. And then I am going to choose the first letter. And when I do, you'll notice I have some variations showing up underneath the letter, and any one of these I can choose, but this little arrow indicates that there are even more. So when I click here, that opens the Glyphs panel, and I have just a couple more choices to make. Well, I don't see the one that I chose in my example, so I'm going to click on the artboard to deselect the S, and I'll come over here where it says Show, and I'll choose the entire font. Now, when I highlight the S, Illustrator is going to take me down to the lowercase s's. There's a lot to go through, so I like being able to just go straight to what I'm trying to replace. Now, I've got a little arrow here, so I can press down, see other choices here, and here is actually the one that I used in my sample on the ending, but I need the beginning swash. So let's see, I think it would be this one right here. I click once and nothing happens because when you use the glyphs panel, you've got to double click to apply the glyph. Now I'm going to come to the N and I'll select it. Let's see if we can find the N easily. Now, if I don't see everything clearly here, I can come down to the bottom. These two icons are my zooming icons. I can press this one, which is small. It zooms out. I don't really want anything smaller. I want to see if I can get it a little bit bigger, and that's actually quite a bit bigger. It has moved me away from my choice, so now I'm going to have to scroll down. Here we go. So... I need the ending swash, so I'm looking for something over here. I think it's going to be this one right here, so I'll double click. And Illustrator applies the ending glyph on my end. Now let's move to the next one. This is P22 Dearest. I'll select the word, come down and start typing P22. Here's my Dearest Pro. This is pretty small, so I'm going to just increase the size. Now the glyph is going to be a little different for this font. I'm going to choose one that is independent of the letter. So I'll place my cursor in front of the letter, then I'll come up to Type, Glyphs, and I'm looking for some beginning glyphs. So there are a lot of different choices, but here we are. These are the beginning glyphs, and this is the one that I want right here. So I'm going to double click, and you can see how Illustrator has added that to the beginning and connected it as if it was made for that. Now we'll place the cursor after the N, and I'm going to look for the ending glyphs, and they're going to be a little further down. I want it to match the beginning glyph, so I'll choose this one and double click right here. And that is how I add the beginning and the ending glyphs. Not all of your fonts will have the beginning and ending glyphs, but when they do, sometimes they're worth a look. Now we'll move to the next one. This is Story Tales. And I wanted to show you this one because in this particular example, I actually changed all of the letters, and I don't recommend that on a regular basis, but sometimes it works. Now I want the S here to be capital, so let me change that first, and then let's select it, and here's the alternative we're going to use. When I use the alternatives down here below the letter, I only have to click one time. Then I'll move to the U, choose this here, 
I'll move to the S, and I don't have alternatives showing up here, but I know there are some because I have them here in my sample. So it may be a good idea unless you find something you really like as an alternative that comes up with your letter to just check out the glyphs to make sure that you're not missing something. So here is the glyph right here. I'll double click it. That adds that little decorative piece there. I'll choose this A and choose this N. The one other thing I'm going to do here is I don't like how close the S and the U are together because I want a little bit more of the swash to show. So I'm going to select the capital S and increase the tracking here. I'm going to type in 25 and press the return key. And I still want a little bit more of that U showing. So I'll increase, and I think that's going to be pretty good right there. So you can still see that swash. So sometimes in addition to changing and adding a swash, you may want to work with the spacing as well. Let's move to the next one. This is Samantha Upright Bold, and this is one of the fonts I definitely recommend you download. I'll select this, go to the Properties panel, and type in Samantha, and here's the Upright Bold, which we will apply. I'll select the H, and I'm not seeing the H I want. I'll click here to open the Glyphs panel, and here is the H I used in the sample. I have a lot of other choices, but I'm going to stick with this one here, double clicking, and then I'll move to the Y. And the Glyphs panel is still open. I also have these other choices down here, but I want the entire font because I think there might be even more Ys. So I'll deselect the Y and then come over here and select entire font and then select the Y to move down into the Y section, and yes, look at all of the choices that I have. I want one that's really decorative. In the interest of time, I'm just going to grab this one. It happens to be the one that I used in my sample, but any one of these would probably have looked really nice. Next, I'm going to go to birthday, and I notice here in the sample, I have a lowercase b, so I'm going to change this to a lowercase, and when I select it, Illustrator takes me down into the lowercase letters. Since this is the first letter of the word, I want a beginning swash, so we can double click. That's not the one I want, and I've got to undo that move, keyboard shortcut command Z, and when I do the undo move like that, it reselects the letter. I'll show you in a minute what happens if I don't do that. Let's move to the next option. I'll double click. And again, that's not the right one. So I'll move over here and let's try a different one. And because I didn't use the undo method, which I showed you a minute ago, I didn't have anything selected. So when I double clicked on the glyph, I ended up with two Bs, which now I'm going to have to delete one. So I'm going to delete that one and reselect this because I still haven't found the B that I want. Maybe this one right here. And that's the one I was looking for. Now in birthday, I also added a swash to the H. And because I'm going to be overlapping some letters, I want something that's fairly simple. I think this one right here will do. So I'll double click and that does overlap my P's and the Y, but I don't think it's too much. Now we're going to come back to the Y, and we already know we have a lot of choices. I just don't want it to be the same Y that I have ending here on happy. And let's try this one here. It's not the one in my sample, but I think that one is going to work fine. Now notice I also have a little heart here, so let's see if we can find where that is. This particular font has a lot of words. It's got a lot of little lines that are available. And here is the heart that they use. So I'm going to double click that. And it's attached now to the word itself, but I want to move it. So I'm going to have to select my letters and we're going to 
convert these in quick actions by pressing on create outlines. And then I've got to ungroup these. So I'll go up to object, down to ungroup, or use the keyboard shortcut shift command G. And then I can select the heart and I'm going to resize it. I'll hold the shift key down. So as I drag from a corner, it resizes it without losing the proportion. And then I'm going to get the direct selection tool, select the dot on the eye and remove it, and then go back to that selection tool and drag the heart over. And with my arrow key, I'm going to nudge it in place. And that is how you add not only swashes, but also ornaments. Now let's move to the next one. This is the Casey font. And I chose this because I wanted you to see this particular little swash right here. So type in Casey and I'm going to use the Casey Classic. This is another font where the swash is not attached to the letter. It is an additional ending swash. So if I select the N, I'm not going to get anything at all, but I'll put my cursor at the end of the letter, come up to type, get the glyphs, and we're going to scroll down until I see the swash and there are two of them that are similar. I can double click here and that's not the one I used before. It has an extra little squiggly here. So I'll undo the move, keyboard shortcut, command Z, and let's try this one here. And that's the one that I wanted. So if you're working with sports teams, you can create that sporty looking swash. All right, well, I saved the best for last. Cantoni Pro is my favorite. And you're going to want to download this and check out all of the different swashes and the ornaments and even some of the ligatures that come with this font. It just is impossible to cover all of those in this video. But let me show you how I came up with a couple of designs here. First, let me type this in. Cantoni Pro, and I'm using the regular. First, I'll select the S, and in my options here, I find one I like, so I click one time here. Then I'll select the N, and again, I'm finding what I want, so I'll click on that N, and then I want some ornaments. Notice I have two different hearts and this little swash underneath here. So I'll place my cursor after the N and then come up to type and choose glyphs and this time I'm gonna choose just ornaments and this gives me a lot of different designs and here I find my two hearts and this little swash so I'll double click on the swash and then the heart and the other heart and close out the glyphs panel. I'll slide this over here and then come down to the bottom of the properties panel in the quick actions and choose create outlines again. And then I've got to ungroup these. So we go to object, ungroup or keyboard shortcut shift command G. Now I'll select the swash and just drag it down under my text. Then I'm going to hold the shift key down and resize this first heart. I'll grab hold of the corner and press down with my mouse and just slide it around and that allows me to tilt it and then I'll drag it over and I think I'm going to tilt it just a little bit more. Raise that up and I'll do the same thing holding down the shift key to resize this heart here and drag it and put it in this space. I don't care for the line going through my heart, so I'll select the swash on the end and my heart and come over to the left toolbar and I'll choose the Shape Builder tool. It's keyboard shortcut Shift M. And once that's selected, I can hold the Option key down and drag over that line and remove it. And then let's just grab everything and drag it over here. 
so you can see it. And that turned out really nice. Now let's look at something else. I'm going to save this heart and delete these and type out happy birthday. So I'll first select my H and I'm going to choose this H right here. And then I'll come to these two P's. And here, what I have is called a ligature. Sometimes when letters occur together, like PP's and TH's and double L's, the creator of the font makes ligatures where the letters aren't exactly the same, and I have that right here. So I'm going to choose this ligature, and the letters just look a little more natural occurring right together. Then we'll select the Y, and I want something mm, kind of fancy. I'll click on this Y right here. I like that. So let's move down to birthday. I'll choose the B. And I want the B to sort of match the H, so I think I'm going to try this one. And that looks like an almost exact match, so we'll keep that here. And I'm going to come over here to the Y. I want something different, but it's got to have the ending swash rather than the beginning one, so I'm going to look and see what else is available. And maybe this one right here, that's pretty fancy. We could go with that. And then I'm going to drag my heart down, place it here. And before I create outlines out of this, I'm going to try one more letter. And that's one thing to make sure you remember is that once you turn your letters into outlines, you're no longer able to add these swashes. So be sure you're finished before you do that. Let's see what D we can come up with here. Maybe this D here would work. And I actually kind of like that. So now I'm going to select everything and drag it over here to the center. And I'm going to now convert my text to outlines and ungroup everything. I want to select just the word birthday and this heart. I'll come over and get the shape builder tool, keyboard shortcut, shift M, hold down the option key and drag through that line. And I think I'm going to leave it just like that. I love the way that turned out, and I love using this font, and I know you will too. I do hope that you've enjoyed this video and learned some things about using glyphs in Adobe Illustrator. And I do want to invite you to subscribe to my channel, and don't forget to click that notification bell so you don't miss any of my future tutorials. And I'm going to look forward to seeing you next time. Thank you so much for watching. Bye now.